Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to my channel, where I like to make audio narrations of various stories on the internet. In this video, we'll be focusing on a short story from the subreddit HFY called Food for Thought Part 3, Grilling for Answers. The link to the original story is down below in the description. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. All who act with honor are of the Chondra. All who are not of the Chondra are mere beasts. Give all that is given. To know is without shame. To not seek understanding is without honor. Envy not your greatness of others. Seek instead to attain your own. Your word is your bond. Your deed is your voice. All that you make sings your name for all that who listen. Sing for those who return to the Chondra. Be silent for those honorless dead. Seven tenets of the path as written, Tal Hais of the Brood Tal. This was not going to be easy. Alex had almost 74 alien warriors to cook for, using alien meat that he had no experience with, and a limited amount of earth spices that he wasn't even sure he could use without ending up in a war crimes tribunal for mass murder. He needed help, and thankfully had just made a new friend. Alex needed a few things from Schnetchel, the strongest set of arms, the answers to a few questions, and most importantly, someone to translate for him since none of the support team seemed equipped with translators like she was. For her part, the female was surprised to see that the human almost immediately asked for help, but she was more than happy to do so, and was glad to answer his questions as they made their way down the wide corridors towards the cargo bays. She answered his questions about the Chondra and its tenants, and how it had served to unify her people in ancient times into a singular society, instead of hundreds of warring clans and factions. She told him that their diet, that while they were primary carnivores, they were capable of eating plant matter as well, though it was seen as the food that their food eats. When he asked, rather worriedly, about the physical differences of her people, she couldn't help but be amused. What of your people, Alex? What differences of your males and females bear? She inquired, wanting to hear more of his species as well. Us. Well, uh, to be honest, it's usually a lot more visible than with your people. No offense, Alex started, thankfully for dismissing the gesture that she made before continuing. Males tend to be larger, more muscular. Females generally have more slender bodies and broader hips, narrow shoulders, and he made a cupping gesture over his chest as he tried to find a polite way to say it. Milk producing organs called memories. It's the human females feed their children until the babies are old enough to handle proper food. Snatchel listened intently and nodded, trying to form an image in her head, using Alex as a baseline. I see. You are like the beasts we raise for food then. You too possess such features amongst the females. We do not, though we do share similarities to you in our form. I am female, she explained. Pausing at an intersection to gesture to herself, males are somewhat smaller on average, though they are stockier in form. With smaller hips and broader shoulders, males also possess larger and more vibrant crests. Alex hurried to keep pace once they started walking again, taking the chance to look her over and compare the others they saw. The differences were subtle, but now that he knew what to look for, he could see it. So the one that came up and started questioning my honor is a female then. Who is she? he asked, stepping aside to let her enter the vast cargo area first. That was Dren Alpha Reclocris, Brood Hasten. Snatchel hissed with a slightly bitter tone. I do not know why she dislikes you so. She has always been a paragon of honor and respect to those around her. The female stopped when she noticed that the human is no longer following her, but standing in the walkway with a look of creeping understanding. What is wrong? That was Reclocris, he asked, receiving a slow nod in reply. Oh, fuck. I've been assigned to her bunkmate for the duration of my stay here. His guide's tail dropped, realizing dawning on her as well. Oh, scales. That explains everything. Come, Alex, we need to speak on this. Alex joined her as she sat on a nearby crate, her tail curling around her lap to keep it from being stepped on. First of all, you should know that the shipmaster is Reclo's father. Secondly, she has been given her own den because she has not yet taken a mate. 
and as the daughter of a not only a ranking officer, but an honoured keeper of the Condra at that, she is among the most desirable females. There are many males who wish to use this as to increase their own honour. Any who choose to join her den, especially males, will have to prove themselves worthy, Snatchel explained, running her claws through her feathers. But now her shipmaster, her own father, has chosen to assign not only a stranger to her den, but an alien male. The human exhaled slowly as he processed this news. So not only is she upset that her personal space has been forcibly violated, but having a male in her den has certain implications, and she can't do anything about it because it was an order from the shipmaster. The Sabari female nodded at his summary, and the two sat for a long moment in thoughtful silence. Well, nothing I can do about it either. I'll just have to either make friends with her, or at least come to some kind of agreement, he concluded hopping down from the crate and brushing the dust of his pants. Snatchel stood and rose to join him. At the least, it would help to make it clear that you have no expectations about the arrangements, Alex. That alone may temper her distrust. Distrust. Now that was an overstatement. Alex gave a nod of affirmation, though, and turned to continue their errand. It took a few inquiries, but eventually they found the quartermaster in charge of this particular cargo bay, as well as a stack of crates bearing the UCH Void Fleet crest. Together, Alex and Snatchel went over the list of supplies that had been shipped out with him, compliments of humanity's goodwill. The cook glossed over most of the seasonings and spices as safety precaution. He'd have to double-check with the ship's medical staff to ensure safety for most of the stuff. Thankfully, good old salt seemed to be fairly universal. It, it was just that the Sabari apparently never thought to use the stuff as a food additive. Aside from the seasonings High Command had sent him, the list included an accelerated hydroponics kit with fruit and vegetable seeds, fleet standard kitchen utensils, a few military-grade processing machines, a year's worth of standard UCH Marine Corps non-perishable MREs, and a pair of biometric-locked equipment crates with his combat gear. Then there were the two crates of his personal effects. One of them contained his personal set of knives that his father had gifted him when he graduated from the academy. His collection of cookbooks and mementos from his brothers and sisters back home. The thought brought a familiar twinge of homesickness that he had come to know during his deployments, making a mental note to send his father a letter sometime. He checked the contents of the second and was pleased to see the boat was in there still with the accompanying kit. Alex put in a request to have the everything moved where it needed to go, Snatchel offering to carry the box of utensils while Alex hefted a bag of salt over his shoulder to carry it back to the mess. I have another question if you don't mind me, getting a little personal, the man piped up as they made their way back, drawing even more curious looks. I will answer it if I can, Alex, she replied, apparently having no issues with a heavy crate of cutlery in her arms. In the bunk room, the den, there is a big basin in the middle, which I assume is for bathing, right? He asked. Snatchel gave a slow nod, wondering where he was going with the question. All right, so the whole bath thing, is there anything for privacy there? The door to the den can be locked for those who are not residents of the chamber she replied, the feathered end of her tail curling a little in thought. Is that not privacy enough? What a brat from the other residents. What's to stop me seeing Reclo's, uh, you know, stuff, while she's bathing? Snatchel had to put in a crate down as she burst into laughter. Alex didn't know what was so funny about the common decency, especially with a species that puts so much emphasis on honor. Forgive me, Alex. Our stuff, as you call it, will only be seen by another while in the throes of mating. She replied with a toothy grin, enjoying the look on his face turning red. She could taste his embarrassment in the air. Come, let us return to the feeding hall so that you can defend your honor and fill our stomachs. Alex wasn't sure if he should be thankful for the change in subject or upset that she didn't really answer his question. In the end, he decided it was probably best to take advice and focus on cooking. A quick shake of his head to clear its thoughts, and the human hurried to catch up with the Sabari woman. Their return was met with a round of excitement. Apparently word of his declaration had spread, and there were more aliens in the room than before. 
Thankfully, he was informed by one of the newcomers that they had only come to watch, since his intent was to repay the gifts that he had been given only applied to the original group of diners. A brief glance showed that Rackrow was still there, still seated where he had last seen her, and still glaring bloody murder at him. He pushed the worry from his thoughts, asked Nitchell to help translate. He headed for the grilling pit and he had gotten his food from earlier. The pit had been cleared in preparation and it seemed that someone had the foresight to bring out a good selection of meats. Alex smiled at the sight. Now this was a problem that he could tackle head on. Each cut was fairly recognizable and with Snatchel translating, he quickly got a crush course in Zabari butchering. Selecting the equivalent of steaks for his meal, he dove into his work, explaining what he could as he did it. Steak was a good baseline as far as he was concerned. If he could fix a steak and show them how to cook that, then he could show them how to cook pretty much anything that wouldn't kill them. He got plenty of questions as he worked, which he was happy to answer. Why start with the meat at room temperature? Why pat the steak dry? What was that salt for? Why let it sit? Alex remembered what he had been told by the Condra. The questions were as much to defend their honor as it was genuine curiosity. Alex was glad to indulge, and soon he was distracting them as they worked on their own stakes, the human helping to pick out the best-looking cuts as the best he could. Soon the hall filled with the scent of juicy meat, cooking over an open flame, the sizzle of flat rising up into the air to tease the senses of the salivating reptiles. He told Snatchel to go join her friends once he was confident that he wouldn't need her for the time being, and started to prep two more steaks. These two would be the personal contribution to the mass barbecue that he wanted to make sure that they were absolutely perfect. Within an hour of the first batches of steaks were coming off the grills, ranging from rare to well done. They weren't wholly consistent, but Alex was proud of the effort that the Sabari put tenders. At least, the steaks weren't cooked or dry at this time, and from the sounds that were heard behind him, the change was definitely appreciated. But as the rest of the steaks were coming off the grill, his were just going on after a good patting dry. He could hear Reklo complaining about this being made to wait. Schnetchel was once again defending him, but he could tell that her tone was now growing concerned. Alex was focused on his work, though. He knew that the wait would be worth it. He watched, listened, and waved the scent of the meat his way. He flipped each steak only once, carefully watching the size of the meat as the heat did its work. Finally, Alex turned and waved to the two females over. Reklo snatched up her table and carried it forward, using her rank to take the lead. This suited Alex just fine as he placed the better looking of the two on her tray. No hard feelings, Reklo Chris. Consider this a peace offering, he said with a smile. Reckler looked down at the meat and gave the human a snarl for his troubles before stalking back to her spot. Once seated, she sniffed at the meat and felt her body grow warmer. She was stunned, to say the least. What in the incestor's name had the human done to it? Clearly, this was drugged, some kind of tricked. As she looked around, though, she could see that there would be comrades enjoying a good meal. No one seemed suspicious, no one was becoming ill or dying in horrible ways. The most distressing thing that she could see was that the pit keepers couldn't keep up with the demand more. She looked back at her own tray and soon she heard a growl of pleasure rise up nearby. Her head snapped around and she saw Snatchel. The lesser female's eyes were half-lidded as her shoulders slumped. Her crest and tail were making some very inappropriate motions. Back to her own food, Snatchel had a look as though she was being mated right there. What had the human done to her? Was it really that meat? Was it that good? She hissed at the juicy steak as though it would help her figure this out. Once again, her anger was denied, and so she tore into it, eager to consume the meat quickly so she could return to... to... Reklo couldn't remember what she was so hell-bent on doing. Every one of her taste buds were bathed in a flavorful bliss. The meat was incredibly tender and soft, but each bite found a delightful crunch as her teeth broke through the seared crust. Every time her jaw closed, she was met with a wash of juices that filled her mouth. She could taste the meat itself. It stirred something primal inside of her, something long forgotten by evolution and civilization. 
Recklow opened her eyes and found the human staring at her, smiling with his flat face and flat teeth. And she wanted to be infuriated, wanted to hate him, but the taste of the food had given her still lingered in her tongue, his words echoing in her mind, a peace offering he had called it. Without a word, she rose and stalked out of the hall, tail trailing straight behind her, Alex's side scratching his chin. That could have gone better, but at the very least she didn't snap at him again, so that was that. He turned his attention back to Snatchel as she was finishing her steak. You liked it. I loved it, she crooned, tilting her head and looked at him. Is this what you humans eat all the time? This time it was Alex's turn to laugh. Not all the time. Unfortunately, our usual food isn't that good, but it still beats dry, charred meat. Snatchel smiled and settled herself in to enjoy the aftermath of the treat. In the rest of the human's cooking was half as good as this, then she was looking forward to the next few years with a small alien. Alex removed his apron and thanked the pit tenders before saying his goodbyes to his new friends and heading back into the corridors. Turning back towards his quarters, the cook toyed with the meal ideas for when he started his shift proper and found himself hoping that Reklo wasn't heading to the den herself. A ball sounded great right about now, after spending that time with the smoke and heat, and the last thing that he wanted to do was try and figure out how to enjoy himself with an irate alien in the room with him. End of part 3 And that, my friends, is the end of this section of the story. If you enjoyed it, please head over to the author's page and show your support. There is a link in the description. If you would like to support this channel, however, there are numerous ways to do so, and they are all listed in the description down below as well. Thank you all for watching my video. Until the next video, I hope you all have a good one. Cheers.